Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Classic Quest Podcast. This is the show where we talk about the classic albums track by track and give our thoughts and opinions on every single song on the album. And we got our popcorns ready as we we here to discuss <laughs> the Roots Organics <laughs> album. And since we already did the past the popcorn song, you know, I just thought it would be fun to have our popcorns. We're actually recording with this mic because you can see this is just a- anyway. That was just my silly introduction. My name is Holden yep. Stefan Roy. I am related friend Bonnie. And uh, today we are going to continue on through our adventure through Organics by The Roots, this album that came out in 93. We talked about tracks 1 through 8. We, we're just questioning where Leonard's 1 through 5 goes, but that is the last review. And I recommend that you check out that first part before jumping into the second part. Just yeah. we acknowledge. We It'll inc- just make more sense for you. Otherwise, as we go through the second half of the album, you might be going, they are not going into enough detail on the great level of the drumming. Well, I already did that part, so check out part one. On that note, I'm out there. A mellow, unique style of speak be the goods that I pedal. I'm stone blam to the known. No- All right, Bonnie, how do you feel about I'm out there? Well, I didn't really like this one. Um, that, yeah. Um, so for me, I found, um, the beat was really just too slow and, uh, I didn't really like, like, I mean, the lyrics were less interesting. There wasn't really much to say. Let me just, like, I'm just like looking at the lyrics right now and like, there wasn't really much that like really like spoke to me. Um, yeah, I mean, I get this one at 3.5 on 5. Like it just wasn't, wasn't at at the very top for me, unfortunately. I don't know. I really, really felt it was smooth, right? Kicks in. I don't know if, again, it's my favorite song on the album. Mm. But as a person who isn't necessarily going out of my way to listen to this kind of music anyway, it sounded as good in a compositional point of view as anything else I've heard. It's not like it sounded bad to me. It flows in with a little intro, and it's like the molecular mass. That's what it is. It brought up science in the first <laughs> sentence, and you were like, no, I was like, no. <laughs> not doing it. I did that last week, and it was awful. <laughs> or that rhythmic ass grass um, is organic hip-hop jazz that you are about to witness groovy in. Mm-hmm. Check it out. <laughs> and it's got like this cool vibe to it. And I don't know. The nappy cat, black thought, days, the nasty fat jazz, out of fast cardiac, cerebral action, retro is my roots for my peoples with the plots and braids, the twist clean, cuts and froze beneath the hats and through the dance, does the boogie backs to relax, I does. And it's just nice. I feel like he rhymes it really well. And it, it just kind of feels like, again, he's just creating this awesome, peace driven music for his people. Mm-hmm. Um, slips and it drips like butter melodic mad noise if you dig it peace to you if not catch a lift to the level of my mental for a smidgen of my spirit just a little dabble do you your butts and the cuts stay the buds of my killer remembering the hot dollar parties at the cellar and i feel like he's kind of letting you know not to fuck with him in a very polite way but also encouraging you that instead of hating come join him try to try to understand it you know i'm deep get a child of some chocolate complicated groovy head to toe plus crazy cooler than vanilla i catch a slot five from a man that's my mellow unique style i speak from the goods that i pedal and again i'm not like super enthralled and gonna hype this up like it's the most witty lyricism i've ever heard right but the way he raps it and the way he flows it is still pretty remarkable and pretty fun for me to listen to and then uh i think foreign objects is a group that he fucks with based on that session song that we'll get to yeah and uh, I don't know. I like when he's just saying Brainiac, Black's the Mind, Color Phone, Fuse the Gut, I wash with. Well, I catch the what's when I kick it Mysterious to make her the raps Crazy naps so I lax the cut And got a fro but can't pick it And it just to me like the way he rhymes it The way he chooses these words It just has a fresh and interesting rhythm And he's, he's just hyping himself up It's pretty good I don't have a lot more to comment in regards to that The lyrics aren't really The focal point of this album I think it again comes down to The actual um, feel Of the song and the overall vibe vibe to it i feel like in that regard this just flows in like the rest of them and i'm gonna go ahead and give it a 4.35 like as i would play this through i'm saying the grand is all right it's nice it's it's really smooth and it's the kind of shit that i would like to see live 
but speaking of live tracks the next one was recorded live and we can talk about SOA man SMA man whatever <laughs> This song is fascinating because I don't think it would work unless you were live and there's not even a way to record this in a studio way that would work and mm -hmm. be like fresh. So it's almost like, you know how every time you see a jazz band, there's that track where they introduce or that moment where they introduce you to everybody in the band mm -hmm. and they get their chance to flex and show off a little bit. Yep. That's this, but with Black Thought ad-libbing on top of it all. It's such a weird experience. Yeah. So he introduces the band, the intro, everybody's playing it, and then, you know, I say what's up, man, I say what up, you know, however he says it, he just kind of has that, the crowd's like singing along, mm -hmm. he introduces himself, he beatboxes a little bit, yeah. it's super freaking fresh. Which we see like a lot more of uh, later on. Speaking of beatboxing, what I found out is that the dude who sang this song, if your mother only knew, whatever if you know beatboxing you know what the hell i'm talking about that shit was big and popping for a while okay. that dude was in the roots for a minute and i'm like that's up that's fucking cool you never heard if your mother only knew mm, maybe i just don't know your version that. we're gonna have to rectify that mm. anyway so then he goes ahead and beatboxes and then the name of the jam is he sings the song and then he introduces steve coleman on the horn and then he kind of plays as he's like scatting along to it and scatting isn't just poop porn it is in <laughs> fact a jazz term for like you know the yes. technically yep. that's very bad scatting yep um and then he just flows in with like each of the different like members so at one point we get leonard hub on the bass and he's like playing his fat ass bass line and he's playing along with it and he's like boop, 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 boop over it it's really just fucking fun it's alive and it really kind of gives you a little taste of i think the magic of this organic music that they're trying to create like it isn't really about having to have always this crazy message or whatever you get this feeling of communal involvement in this song i mean i say what's up man is basically what he's saying in the thing so it's mm -hmm. like what's up man and everybody gets say to say it up, and then up, it shifts the focus to all the different people in the group and gives them a little chance to show off why they're special what they bring in whether it's focusing on the keyboards for a minute i'm pretty sure the drums get a minute i'm pretty sure everybody gets a minute and meanwhile the whole way through we get this old school vocal jazz performance from a dying thing that honestly if it wasn't for like Scatman john do you think anybody would even know that scat's a thing these days like not that many people well i'm a scat man bitty 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 bada ba 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 I mean, beep, beep, anybody beep, beep, who knows jazz knows what scat I mean, outside is. of jazz. I feel like you learn about it when you're young. I feel like it's something, I don't know, I feel do like you talk about it on Sesame Street and stuff. Like, because it's something that anybody can do because you just make noises with your mouth. Scat? But, like, obviously, you I can never do it really well. heard about scat until jazz and scat man John. Oh. And I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And then I said, why is everyone hating the designer kid for scatting his way through rapping? Is that a problem? I don't know. Maybe it is. Uh, maybe this isn't even the right audience to ask about <laughs> designer. Um, I just, I like it. Yeah. I feel like it gives you this ethereal sense of everybody contributes, everybody's part of the project, and then in a sense, it's all love, and it's all being communicated with like nothing but this, I say what's up, man, I say what's up, man, and just flows in, mm -hmm. and builds it up, and it's such a cool, boppy experience, and I gave it a 4.5 on 5. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that's what it is. It's like, you know, they're letting you know to sit back and relax. Like, you know, you're they're here to have a good time. Like, they're going to entertain you. Like, you can just, you know, not really have to think about anything. And I think that's kind of clear because, you know, they're... Like, he's not really saying much at all um, in this song. And, you know, he's quite repetitive. He repeats a lot of the same things. Um, but I think that's kind of what it is. Like, it's, you know, just for you to, like, chillax to you and hang out and um they're just gonna you know play some music and like i like the beatboxing i think that's really cool um by black thought um 
and it's really fun. Like it makes me it makes me want to see them live because you know I'm sure that it would just be like so much more enjoyable um, live. Uh, so that that's pretty much it. I give it a four point three five on five. All right, next up is one of the best tracks on this whole album for real reals. There's yeah. a riot going on. <laughs> It's very it's short. 11 seconds. And it's somebody snoring. And that's it. Like really amplified, like sound engineered, focused on snoring. Yep. <laughs> I don't, I, I at first gave it a two. Right. And then I said, no, I think the mixing's pretty good on this. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Okay. Like it's, it's like they really did a good job like mixing and messing around with the snore to like really give that effect. So I gave it a three. I I also gave it a three. Um, it's just snoring, and it, you're just like, what? Like it doesn't. It's not even like, like that. Even it's... like the placement doesn't make sense to me because like like both of the songs like that it's between like you know in the middle of are like uppity kind of fun songs so it's not like it was like a lull in like the the album it wasn't like after like a boring song where it's like okay like okay like things are getting boring let's pick it up again you know it kind of like to change it up on the album like it's just what and like how, what does this have to do with there's a riot going on is somebody sleeping through a riot like i'm just confused like what is going on like i mean so i gave it a three out of five because it's unique but not necessary um, that's all I have to say. <sighs> Next up. Yep, yep. Let's have more popcorn. Popcorn nom, revisited. Pull the quest from the SQT. And I'm like, so before you know it's funky. The rhythm T. Boop it up, bop 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 it up, is a good part of the beat when yep. that part like kicks into it. Um, I'm confused by like the name of the song. Um, this is Popcorn Revisited. But like, it doesn't really sound like the first popcorn. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. I played them next to each other a couple of times, and then I don't get it. I don't. I don't. Except for the. Maybe it's just the, like a like a showing off kind of a song. But it just it just feels like they took the hook and the premise of that other song, and, and like brought it in. Which um, they did. Yeah. I don't know. I just kind of. What do you think about it? Um. I mean, it's another. It's another song where they're, you know, they're they're kind of just like, like I said, they're showing off, they're doing their thing, they're spitting some like, you know, great rhymes. Some Black Thought is great, um, and his flow is kind of like nonstop, pretty much. So I think that's kind of cool. It's very like tight and well done, and like he's, you know, like this would be like a song that he would, I don't know, if there's like a jazz battling um, situation, but like I think that this is definitely like a. He's showing us what he can do, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I like the beat, and it definitely sounds cool, so I give this a 4.4. 4. I, I mean, I really liked it. Oh, it looks like the first verse is similar. Mm -hmm. Is the first verse the same? Did I miss that? I'm just figuring. Anyway, so, yeah, this one has Black Dot going on, and I guess maybe yep. it's almost like he had written a whole bunch of verses, and... Yeah, I think it's the same first verse, and then, um, I don't know, instead of uh, Quest Love doing that second verse, it's like he had written it, you know. Uh, secondly, I speak for a Quest from the SQT, you know, so close it in and that mm -hmm. kind of point of it. I'm, I mean, I don't know if it's the same second verse. I feel like it's different. No, but it actually is kind of very similar i mean i didn't realize that at first maybe this is just like kind of like his solo version of the song and then does his own little third verse and maybe it's like that's the reference track and the other one just kind of has the other ones on it either way sounds different and i'm okay with it i thought it was like another one that flows in terms of the same kind of vibe that we've been getting um jazzy music they're rapping over it i kind of feel dumb that i didn't catch that the first verse is the same on this song um and then the second verse is kind of very similar to the first one down to 
at the end of it, he goes, on to Kid Crumb, I pass the popcorn. But I don't think Kid Crumb comes this time. I think Black Dog keeps it going. Yeah. And then does his own uh, little third verse, which I do really like. He also brings up Grits, get her, so grab your sister. I get wrecked, so check my respect from the wreck that I've gotten. Biting this will make you fronts turn rotten. The original rock chewer, so if you bite his rhymes and lyrics and shit, your front teeth will go rotten, which I thought was actually kind of clever. And then, yeah, the popcorn court comes in again, and it's basically like this is a remix, if you really think about it. So they did a remix, but called it Revisited. And I guess that's cool now that I understand it, and I felt really stupid for how I started this little segment. (laughs) Still, that's cool that we discovered it together, and it wasn't like we discovered it in the comments tomorrow or whenever you guys watch this, and then it's like, oh, shit, we should have known that. Still, 4.25 on 5. It's not 100% my favorite, but it's also like... At this point, I'll be honest, I'm feeling a little bit of burnout from this. Like, my curiosity as a listener of somebody who's not into the sound has faded a little bit. And now I'm still, like, I bet the quality is the same as anything I give a higher grade to, for real. It's just what it is. Anyway, next up, it's, uh... Peace. Which is, like, peace. Bonnie's like, oh, what? fuck. There's, what is that? It's like this. Old reverb and feedback of reality disturb my peace. Forcing me to ret- Do you have peace in your soul, Bonnie? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. Talk to us about the song. Um, I really like this one. Um, I think, like, I really like, like, the, the beatboxing and, like, the clapping at the beginning. It's very, like, raw and organic, I can say. Um... It's really cool. Um, let me just like, like I don't know. I thought all of it was really neat. I, basically, they tried um, rhyming a lot with like peace, and I thought that was interesting. Like peaceful minds in a land of war seek peace of mind through mental peacefulness, 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 peacefulness in the mind of the beholder. And I just thought it was kind of interesting, like the way that they kind of like pulled out all of, like the pieces, um, the echoes reverb and feedback of reality disturb my peace. Um, just different ways I, that it was it was interesting. Just like the whole thing, I thought it was really cool. Um, so I really like this little piece. Um, play on words, huh? huh, huh? Um, <laughs> I give this a, a five on five because it's just a cute little song and I liked it. I kind of like how he looks at the idea of like peaceful minds in a land of war. So it's like, how do you obtain this level of peacefulness and mindfulness within yourself and to feel that level of comfort in light of the chaos surrounding you and then kind of how it almost intimidates other people, you know, you know, uh, so I thought that was really cool. And then, how you know, the echoes, reverb and feedback of reality disturbed my peace, forcing me to retreat to the below beneath, down a step and a step and a step and a step beyond to a level of my own private, mystic, ritualistic, culturalistic sanity. So it's like, yes, to go when people attack his peace or whatever and almost ground and center himself in a strong sense of who he is. I also think, too, like at the times, like, I mean, it was, you know, the early 90s. There was like the crack epidemic. Um, the nation of Islam influence. Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking more of like all the bad things that were happening. Like, you know, the, basically it was like the, the, the war on drugs, you but know, like, in West Philadelphia, born and raised. Like, that's obviously like, where he got, you know, into trouble in West Philadelphia. So. Well, I mean, I look at it like it looks to me like he's saying that through a history and understanding of himself and through like a meditative journey, he's able to figure out how to stay grounded um you know so yet some say that i am insane is that not ironic my soul not sonic as i flow through the tonic of life i find there's strife behind that pushes and pulls and pulls and pushes me into all this bullshit that i experience from day to day is the reason for my search or journey and struggle to find the broken pieces of the sign that combine to form the crooked line that we all call peace so in a sense it's like all the bullshit that exists is the fueling force for him to keep fighting forward to find peace because it's basically the point of the journey i thought that was interesting how he was able to kind of showcase how he is able to kind of stay grounded in the midst of chaos and i think that's really nice in the middle of this album right after a flossy popcorn track but i think it also goes to show that they can like do make their music with nothing Like they, you know, even if it's like, you know, you know, if it was like a war type situation, like, and there's no power and there's no nothing, like you can still sit there and make music. And I think that that's kind of something that's pretty cool as well. And then, um, yeah, it flows into the next track on the project, Common Dust. 
it sprouts the broke mouth to free the vocal eyes. Old school highs like So um Basically, this has the most beautiful guitar and bassing on the album to me, and it just flows in, and it's like groovy, almost rock-centric sound compared to a lot of the other ones. I don't know if it's rock per se, but something to like the feel of it where it really just stands out. But it's also like stupidly hip hop in the way that they they fresh it, they make it happen. And I like how it starts with ashes to ashes and dust to dust, which is just a powerful term in general, often referring to the idea that we are born of the ashes and we return to them when we die which leads into it's common dust y'all and you don't stop for you to trust the out real hip-hop and i took that as we all come from the same place we all come from the same spirit and through hip-hop you know you you can kind of bind and grow and whatever so it's almost like a little more serious <clears throat> So thought be a pillar of the styles of speech A dusty hip brother might have saw the bleach Teach I aims not Just talk my sins Stamps I give not but the consequence So he's like yo I'm gonna use my rhyme platform to do something proper Not worry about what people think about it And I'm gonna set out to I'm gonna put some integrity into this Funk the stylistics and jazz the vibe Laughs at etudes cause I'm staying alive Times I grip not so it limps along Dust you collects if you digs my song and I guess in a sense he's kind of like maybe we're fading into more of like a, a dust in the sense of something ethereal that you can kind of find through his music and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was really cool. I think Kid uh, Crumbs comes back into it. Thoughts of Black Miss, you want to catch the crumbs when I hums a fat song with derelicts and bums. Smoke jams with the foe from the cellar when they come. Mouth be cotton, got sticks of gum. Doesn't do a lot for me. It's fine. He flows through. And I feel like he's just kind of carrying on with the same central theme of they're gonna make this good music that people are cool and he's gonna do it with the crew chorus kicks back in crumbs comes back in does his verse um i'm sorry if this seems like we're going quick through it it's just i don't know what to comment here it's like jazzy cool music it's like crumbs stay at the mic come to and from the ashes past the what kid l7 we massive jazz the funk slow be poke baby she glass puff the stuff you now uh, you have now I recline and make you laugh so I mean Crumb's still rapping he's gonna do it till he dies and people get high laugh and have a good time I'm like all right Pretty roots much. can boost not and off the docks I rocked your riches the egg or shit is locked that's if the force is with us I'm like all right it's fine it's not that it's bad <laughs> and I don't mean it to come off like that it's just not interesting to me it's just flowing really well over the beat <clears throat> In the same way, I feel the same thing out of Black Dot's last verse. It's it's all right. I like how they keep on the main subject of dust, kind of throwing it through. Like that's cool because it makes it feel more on topic. But ultimately, it's just like the great communicating essence of life beyond us. Yep. And then the chorus flows for a while. It kind of grooves. I like that groovy live experience again that comes through it. And I feel like at this point, it's just as good or bad as any other one. And I'm giving it a 4.25. But I have to give them credit that these songs don't sound the same. I mean, I might say jazzy for all of them, but they're yeah, all sorts different of jazzy. different kinds of jazzy that are really dynamic. And you really can just identify the song instantly by its sound. So they all have a distinct personality and I have to give all the props to that. So it's a 4.25 on 5. That's cool. Um, like this one too, I was kind of like a, a little bit lost. Um, like when I like sat down and like was like reviewing it, like I la like literally listened to it twice in a row and wrote nothing down. And I was like, I have no idea what to say about this one. <laughs> like there is just nothing that's like as like outstanding as any as anything else. Like it's just kind of like a blah kind of song. Like it's fine. Um, like the beat is fine, the rapping is fine, but there's nothing mind blowing for me on this one. It was just sort of passive. I can I'll say that. So I give this a 3.8 on 5. All right. Next one's a doozy. <clears throat> it's called <laughs> The Session. The former longest posse cut in history. Yeah. I mean, I have to give them credit. If you're trying to stand out, what do you do? You got to find something fresh and original to do, right? So not only are they a band that is doing a bunch of fresh and original stuff. Right. They go out there and they put, probably at the time, 
the longest posse cut that existed. And they probably thought that nobody was going to beat this record for a long time and because it's impractical and it's 12 minutes and 48 seconds and etc. There have been longer posse cuts since yep. because history is forever. And, and people, people like to beat records. And people need to stop saying stuff of all time when the future hasn't happened yet, but that's fine. <laughs> so this track starts and wow, let me, I wrote it down. For the first minute and 25 seconds, it's basically um, Black Dot and kind of running through the roster of who's here. Mr. Trotter, a.k.a. Uh, Tariq, uh, Tra Mr. Black Dot from the Roots. Mr. Simmons, a.k.a. AJ Shine the Dollar Sign. Mr. Pitts, a.k.a. Lord I Kill. Yeah. Mr. Green, a.k.a. Straight from Mr. Manifest. Miss Thompson, <laughs> a.k.a. Shorty Pussy. Oh, I'm like, that's a weird name. Mr. C, a.k.a. Me, Myself, and I. Mr. Dor and I'm like, oh, okay. Yep. All the way down. Yep. And then we, the foreign objects, and it's like this. Now we get loose. Get loose. And you're like, all right, have fun. Have fun. Malik B, get loose. And then Malik B starts us off. There's a lot of rappers on this one. Yep. <clears throat> and it's basically flossy fun the whole way through. Yep. Fun lyrics like, I will just slay and disobey. I will display banana clips that slaughter with the words and the arbs of the barbs. I got the urge to splurge like a Bosnian Serb. That's actually really fucking clever. I drift. I means a draft. I means a riff. I means a rap. Rap. Catastrophe. I don't want to be no brass trophy. So okie dokie, folks. Most provoke. And it's like, I love the way he rhymes. I really do. And he flows off of it. And it's just him being like all over. And I like the fact that he sh compares himself to Shakespeare Spirit, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, but since he's black, Maya Angelou, and Banjalou was his next thing he rhymes, and it, it means banjo betrayed, and I'm like, this is so fascinating, like, it's actually really interesting to listen to, on the other hand, the song's 12 minutes long, so, yeah, your interest, in my opinion, starts to wane, um, next kid, Root, I guess, is the next one, and he flows, and he's totally fine, too, you know, uh, picture this as I get rugged with the scripture, evacuating speed, spreading thoughts like a drifter. I exit my state of greater elevation, unifying grains through the force of the imagination. You dig what I'm saying, but I see your minds playing tricks. You thought you got the channel, but you couldn't get a fix upon my mental. I keep it complicated. It's the same kind of shit we've been getting on the album, but just a different guy saying it. Isn't a little bit my feelings on that, but at the same time, I'm not trying to take away from it. It's, it's interesting to listen to. It's just also i don't feel like it really stands out you know come the misfits got a tail take you on a mad trip the thoughts unveil i'm too deep you sinks down but you improved that you just kind of said that anyway uh next up is Pazzy plant and he's all right um same kind of shit he identifies himself for us they chase but they'll never catch my pattern so around the plant like the rings upon saturn yo i'm fatter than many came to kick away at my, any job um cat conniver it's abstract if i'm liable i'm like i'm fine i'm having a lot of trouble really getting into this <laughs> one at this point Every like it's just you know a posse cut so it's like everybody has their flow and like and does their thing i feel like they're all equal because nobody's popping off as the most like overly exceptional or stand out then the me myself and i person comes on and does their thing and he does say so lock up your doors because i'm busting loose like richard Pryor, sitting stuff on fire we got funky rhymes and i thought that was noticeable because he references the richard Pryor situation where he set himself on fire and ran up the street and that's interesting he also says no metamorphistically i kiss a licorice and i'm like that's a standout lyric because it's wonky and any miss I wish to kiss or else I dislike this. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. So girls gotta love you or else. He dis you diss them? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Then uh we get the lady coming in and I really enjoyed her. She was fun. Um I feel like she's got a cool energy. Like, yes, you might be wanting to consider me a tomboy. Boy, get it right. I'm still strictly loving men. Send me your love. Don't ever think I don't need it. Shit, I got problems. Can you help me out? Shout a little louder. If you're sure you can hear me, fear me not. I'm just another average girl. Curls in my head. Yeah, I think I look good. And it's almost like she wants to go out there and let you know that even though she's a little bit of a rapper and hard, she still wants some dick in her life, which is fair. Yep. Um, 
then we got the next one and it's manifest and he does his thing and at this point i'm like oh my gosh they're still <laughs> rapping and there's still a lot of song they're left. still going they're still and, like, having it's fun a cool premise and all and i could also tell you that if i was just vibing to this and i really liked it in terms of the jazz and like the beat was something i was super feeling it would be cool but at the same time i don't think anybody's really dropping like the craziest rhymes here every single lyric is prepared in the hunt for the metro with scoops of fat loops and funky lingo levels being felt all over the 50 okay whatever everybody's talking about shit like that it's totally fine then there's lord akil and he's from the southern of philly yet of the roots there comes me who the janky little brother of mr bruce i'm like who the fuck are these people what are you talking about <laughs> i don't mean to make fun of him too he's probably he's just as good as everybody else and everybody else is fine here i'm just a little like okay mm -hmm. guess what aj shine is next and he's gonna go in bursting off shots of gab and getting lifted by the gift to start the job it's nice he's got a little like rhyme scheme going on the rhymes that i grab send schools to the slab as i write scores the funky orator's gone and it's just like i realized nope not getting anything super cool or interesting in this verse to me he's all right he sound like if you were to like play some of these verses it's just kind of like i couldn't tell them apart or whatever that's fine then quest love comes on and you're like oh he stands out <laughs> he just can't help it he's got that voice mm -hmm. to, uh it's me brother question on the mic to flow to bust a fat rat it's hat rhyme and i'm like yeah this this is nice where has this been the whole song <laughs> i'm flexing with my mental verbalistic chocolate sucker when you're listening so please get off it scoring two years ago before the quest the jane's mission anyway and I, either way just fun mostly because i like his voice more and i like the way he just says shit more and it's cool to have him here rap and joining us here then finally black dot joins us and i'll be honest his verse is pretty standout and i think he is in terms of rapping one of the best performances on this song all things considered you know like the mental is the temple and the central sees you trying to flam man i catch a lift like bob marley and parlay on airy clouds i drop bombs like saudi arabian floss like a ross Fabi, and it's like nice it's the nipple sex upon the grits that come a baby in i'm like ah he just did that he brought the grits back one more time i have actually had the grits wikipedia page open it's a corn based thing it's cornmeal isn't it it's a corn it's a creamy it, corn kind of it's like um i thought i think it's made out of the same thing All that I'm saying cornbread is, is made out of if y'all want to send us some grits i'm open to it yeah it's really hard um, to find like cornbread like mix like up here anyway then it gets to you know the song ends and it was just like that was that was the longest posse cut we've had to review um look it's really cool for what it is yep i don't think i enjoyed it because i wasn't a hundred percent into the feel of it but i respect and admire it because it's a really interesting cool memorable way to stand out in my opinion in a non-corny capacity like it's not corny it's just not my cup of tea so i give it a 4.25 yeah um i mean I mean, you, you covered most of it, and like that's what it is. It's a long, you know, 12 and a 12 minute, 43 second uh, posse cut. Um, you know, we've got all of like the members, it seems, of um, foreign objects, and they're all introducing themselves exactly as you described it. And so it's kind of um, repetitive and just kind of long. Um, and all about having fun, which is very nice, and it's always nice to hear that, that it's like a little bit more of like a fun album that they're all just trying to like just have a nice time like that they're not here to be like hard gangsters or anything like that like they're just here to like make music have fun sounds like get weak get high and you know doing whatever um so i mean like there's like some interesting guys like you know i liked pazzy plant i thought he was he had a cool flow um i like shorty um her 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 rhymes do sound kind of like a beginner though and i think that that was like m noticeable because she standed out as being the only woman so like she would definitely like caught my attention and her sound obviously like it was different from the guys but um it also made my ears like more sensitive to like anything that like she, like there wasn't anything like extraordinary in her in her like little part but it was still good um I liked Lord Akil. I thought he was nice. Uh, you know, 
brother question um you know quest love he's really cool obviously like his his part was really cool um but and for me like i found like because the beat you know is goes on and on for you know 12 and a half minutes plus um it did get a little bit annoying after a while but that's just me um so this is something that is good um but it's just fucking long um and maybe not something that i would go back to or i don't know if other people would go back to this like maybe like do like does anybody like love posse cuts like is that like i don't know like i think that they're cool and they're nice and they're always like you know i'm sure for like the people featured in them like they're so appreciative of of that uh you know being featured on like you know somebody's album um but it does get a little bit annoying because like often you just get to like hear them in like one little verse and that's it and you don't really know anything more about them um but they're all just kind of like showing off doing what they do so that's fine um i gave it a 4.1 on five all right next track is called sarita's having my baby allow me to beat you to the punch Eric B. and Rakim have a song called Chinese Arithmetic, and this <laughs> shit reminded me of that shit. Wow. And I bet you were going to say something. I really like, didn't, though. Oh, because so the last time we had something that was kind of Asian y. No, no, it wasn't right just kind it. of Asian y. It was very similar to what I found. And this do 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 do. Kind of, this oh. made me think of kung fu fighting. Everybody love. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Anyway, um, so it's really cool. It's a nice little instrumental. It's 43 seconds. It's a great break. It's something different. It's not. It doesn't have vocals. It's almost like it's everything I needed after that 12 minute and 43 second cipher. Um, I liked it. This this little Sarita's having my baby song. Lift it up into your imagination. Who's having my baby? Anyway, I gave it a 4.5. I liked it. 4.5. Yeah, it's so my well made. Goodness. It's so well made. It's so enjoyable to listen to. Oh wow. Okay. Um, you don't agree? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Um, so like, this is like, I don't know, I, I don't mean to sound like, maybe I'm just going to be ignorant, I'll just say I'm ignorant, I'm not trying to be racist in any way. I didn't know if this was like a Japanese or like a, or like a Chinese kind of tune that was like being played, um, but it's definitely like an Asian kind of a sound. Uh, um, and like, is Sarita Asian of some sort? Like, I don't know if this had something to do with her having the baby and like that somebody's asian or like i had no idea like again like this is sort of like a weird just like little like thing that they're doing in the middle i think sirita is an american songwriter so what's with this then <laughs> i don't know so anyways i didn't really like it i gave it a three on five. Oh, it's a singer from back in the day in in, in philly is she any sort of asian no, she she's black. Oh, okay. I don't know why that matters to you. It's not about race, Bonnie. No, but it, it Thank was you. featured in. Thank this, you for this showing the kind of person you are. The kind of song. <laughs> you know what, Bonnie? As far as everything's concerned, I, th I think this review is going to be carrying on. You're gonna throw that at me, and it's gonna hit me, and it's gonna be awful. Hey, yo, Bonnie, shut that shit up. Yo, chill, chill. I don't know. It comes in. I ain't doing shit, man. I'm tired. I'm fucking tired. I mean, what the fuck? Fuck that, man. I'm, <laughs> yo, chill. Shut the fuck up, man. And then it just gets like funky with the music. Like they're trying to get him to do some shit, and he's mad, and he's like, "Fuck all y'all." <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just like he doesn't want to do it. And then they got that there, and I guess it was supposed to be real funny and shit. I'm like, okay, I'm giving this a four. This is just something I like, should have ended on Sarita's having my baby. No. That's a great ending to the album for me. No. Um, did you give it a grade? Oh, I gave it a four. Oh, yeah, four. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's a minute 28, so it's not super long. Um, it's just sort of everybody, like, fucking around with Black Thought. Um, and he just wants everybody to stop because he's tired. And, like, everybody kind of picks it up. And, like, they're all just kind of, like having like a musical argument sort of like it's very cute i thought it was very funny um it definitely feels like very raw and like you can see like how 
like even just from this like you know again like i'm comparing it to like what i see today from jimmy fallon but like even like you know back then like they're still like they're obviously very talented musicians and they're able to convey like their feelings or and, and stories um like through their instruments and i think that again it goes to show how talented they are and how their instruments are part of who they are and i think that, like it's so easy that they're able to like taunt him with like you know the drums with everything like they're able to like do all this stuff just by being like ah shut up like i just want to like go home i'm tired i don't want to do this and like you know it's just it's just fun i don't know i liked it i gave it a 4.35 on 5 i liked it that's fair. You're allowed to like it. I, I am. That brings us to the end of our album review, where we talked about the Roots Organics for a lot of songs. We went through the whole long-ass fucking session. It wasn't that. It was 12 minutes and 43 okay, seconds. that was long. I listened to that song for 45 <laughs> minutes straight or so. Um, I gave this album a 4.259. So, from my point of view, this album is a refreshingly interesting thing to listen to. We have an ex- extremely amazing band playing some incredible compositions, playing some live sounding stuff, showing the true depth and soul of, I guess, organic sounding music, not overproduced, just relying on the actual talent of what's going on. Yeah. Black Dot's like a fucking vocal instrument. A few other guys show up to rap too. Concept wise, a few songs really stand out. I'll never forget Grits. Um, but in general, I can't say the rhyming is the focal point of this album. At least you want to eat But on grits. the other hand, how everybody rhymed was really cool because it was just a great like concept and just the way it flows. Like it's such an enjoyable experience. It's yeah. one of, it's really a something you just get lost in the music listening to. So I don't, I don't know. I think it's like a cool seminal album type thing. Like it really makes an impact. It's something that clearly influenced music in terms of their career and everything that came after that. But I don't honestly think I'm ever going to listen to this again for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean, yeah, I gave this, um, it was a 4.08 on 5, so 81.6%. So, it, I mean, it kind of scoots into, like, the classic quest, or into the classics, but just barely. Um, I mean, it's nice. Like, I, I said it on, like, one of the songs that this is sort of, like, something I would put on at, like, a a barbecue just to have something on in the background where nobody was really listening to it but like you know it's still kind of fun and jazzy um i don't know i it's it was nice i'm glad that we finally did some roots um i'm excited to like further explore them uh, in the future but um yeah i'm glad i at least have some sort of knowledge about their their music now and what's your favorite roots album out there internet people yeah um so that's pretty much it all right thank y'all for watching tell us in the comments what your favorite roots album is or anything else really just tell us stuff in the comments please <laughs> um make the Talk effort to, to leave a comment i'll make the effort to answer you. you can subscribe to the channel for more reviews like this one you can like the video if you did and that would make it cool mm-hmm. special thanks to the patrons is milga damsey chris Brado, jonathan barnes dj black hurricane linda williams coney sparks and i think that's everybody they helped us get a new camera they're really doped I'm going to pay for our website. They're really dope. They get to tell us what albums to review, and they pick really long ones on purpose to, to make sure that we have to – they really get their money's worth kind of thing. <laughs> Real long albums sometimes. I'm kidding. I love it. It's fun. <laughs> it's all part it, of the game. It really is fun, though. Um, although I'd be shocked if they ever requested a 30-minute album. That would be like, wow, really? No, it's not going to happen. Um, thank you all. They're really amazing people. If you want to get us to cover anything, you totally can. Um, and you can help us grow as we try to really bring attention to albums and going in deep with this type of thing. In fact, we want to go in deep like the grits. Um, anyway. I make music myself. You can check that out in the description of this video. And I don't have a lot more to say today, so thank y'all for watching. You are amazing people, and I'm going to get in trouble for all the dumb shit I said today. Bye.